What's going on hawkers? In today's video we are talking about all of the pieces of gear that you may need in order to get out on trail. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to share with you all of the pieces of gear that I brought with me on this trip. I'm actually out in the woods right now in Daniel Boone National Forest, section hiking the Sheltoe Trace. And don't get too distracted. I know my hammock's not level. I like my feet elevated at night. Okay, let's start with the things on the outside of my backpack that I take with me. First thing is a sit pad. Now, on the outside of my backpack, uh, there is a little slot along the backrest in order to slip this sit pad in. Uh, the next thing on the outside of my backpack is a pack towel in order to wipe the sweat from my face while I'm walking. And then right below that is some hand sanitizer. I also have some water outside my backpack, but you don't really need to see that. The following things I keep on the outside of my backpack in the front pocket, or some people call it the back pocket, it's the mesh pocket that's uh, away from your back. I keep my tarp for my hammock in there. This is, I'll link everything in the description as long as I can find a link for it. But this is a um, War Bonnet Thunderfly 13 foot tarp. I also keep the stakes for that tarp because I don't care about that stuff getting wet. Tarp, it's fine if it gets wet anyway. And then the suspension system stays in my Brad Pod. <laughs> this is made by Miyagi on the trail. I keep my ridge line in there and I also keep um, my 12 or maybe they're 15 foot spiderweb straps by Dutchware with Dutch clips and beetle buckles. Uh, also on the outside of my pack, I keep my water filter system. Now this is the uh, Sawyer full size and then I have a little mod made to it so it makes filling up my water bottles easier. I also got this from Hilltop Packs, not the little, not the little bag but um, there's a bunch of bear cordage in here. It's just, I think it's called 2.2 millimeter zingot. And just to hang your bear bag if you're somewhere where you need to hang a bear bag. Also on the outside of my pack, I keep my headlamp. Now this is good to stick in like a hip belt pocket for quick access or maybe a fanny pack. This is the Petzl Bendy, <clears throat> excuse me. It's very minimalist. Uh, a lot of climbers I think use this. The battery doesn't last a really long time, but it does the job. And then this thing is awesome. This is a little clip that you can hang. It's called a hang time clip, uh, hang time hook rather, and you hang it on your ridge line inside of your hammock. And you can lay there and watch movies or whatever you want. Even though I don't have a whole lot of hygiene while I'm out on trail, I do bring with me uh, a little hygiene kit. It's got all my first aid stuff like band-aids, triple antibiotic ointment, that kind of thing, and dental floss, um, Q-tips, toothbrush, toothpaste, anything that's gonna, you know, help you stay a little cleaner on trail. I have a different Ziploc bag that I keep my toiletries in. So this has got my deuce of spades, some anti-monkey butt powder to keep me from chafing, some baby wipes. Uh, I didn't bring my poop hammock, but uh, for those of you interested in the last video, I talked about the port of privy You can check it out at theportofprivy.com if you're interested in getting a poop hammock, but I try to go a little bit lighter weight on this trip. Also like to live life a little bit comfortable. So, Check that. This is the uh, Helinox Chair Zero. Sometimes I'll bring it. Sometimes I will bring my Helinox Sunset Chair, which weighs like three pounds. But uh, this trip, like I said, since it's a little lighter, I really didn't even need the Helinox, but that's okay. You don't, you don't have to have a chair to get out into the woods. That sit pad works great too, or just a rock, anything like that. And then the last piece of gear that, well, actually there's two more. The, the next to last would be an under quilt protector. This is made by Hammock Gear, and it was actually a gift from Mr. Backpacking with Jason, sir, for Christmas. Thank you, Backpacking with Jason. Ah, the other thing are trekking poles. Now, you can use whatever poles you want. Um, Gossamer Gear sent me these. They're pretty expensive. They are um, the Gossamer Gear LT5s, I think they're called, and foam handle they're super light at like four ounces a piece so you can just buy some at Walmart if you want or if you want to go a little bit more expensive um, you can get some like Amazon ones that will do pretty good I really like the carbon fiber especially if they have a cork hand grip now before we dive deep into the inside of my backpack and what goes in there um, I do want to mention the clothes that I'm wearing which brings me to today's video sponsor which is revolutionrace.com they make absolutely awesome clothes. I want to show you two real quick today. Um, one is their rain jacket. Now, this is the Silence Pro Shell rain jacket. And let's stand up so I can show you a little bit about this. 
So this drain jacket is one of their best sellers on their website. Uh, everything runs a little bit smaller on there. This is a European company, so whatever you order, make sure you size up. Like, I got a double XL in shirts, and normally I am a large, but this rain jacket is awesome. I'll give you a few of my favorite features. It's not an ultralight rain jacket, okay? So if you're an ultralighter, don't buy this. This thing is weatherproof. I mean, it's waterproof. It is breathable. It's absolutely awesome. I love the pit zips. Look how, look how deep that pit zip goes. Isn't that crazy? That'll keep you nice and cool whenever you got that rain jacket because the last thing you want is to, to have to be out there in the woods sweating on the inside and then getting soaked on the outside. So you can open it and close it as much as you want. Awesome on the pit zips. Um, I also really like that it has all these pockets. Now that's going to make it less ultralight so that's where that comes from but it's got a pocket up here on the chest and it's always so annoying if you don't have pockets you know, like right here for your hands or for just sticking stuff in there. I also want to show you the pants. So these pants, freaking awesome, man. Check this out. I love when a company thinks things through and they reinforce like weak spots. So on the knees, on the butt for sliding down and then down at the bottom to help keep ticks and that kind of stuff out. They got a little cinch and they reinforce this area where your legs are always rubbing together. Now they don't just have rain jackets and pants, they have an assortment of clothes. So I encourage you to check out their website, revolutionrace.com. Use the code Jeremiah15 and get 15% off of your order. Save yourself a little money on those clothes that you're gonna be wearing out into the backcountry. Now next thing I wanna show you guys is what's gonna go in my pack. And I don't really like it touching the ground, so I'm gonna show it to you like this. It is my under quilt that's made by UGQ. That's a 40 degree under quilt right there. So that'll take you down to some pretty good temperatures for moderate fall weather and spring. Uh, I also have inside of my hammock, this thing is a good budget sleeping bag. I use it as a quilt. It's called the Aegis Max. Um, it is more of a ultralight budget option, which is awesome. And then my hammock, the Pride of Kentucky, which was made by Miyagi on the trail. Awesome 12 foot hammock. You can see, <laughs> got the UK logos all over it. That is so awesome. Now I mentioned those straps earlier. These are the straps I was talking about. Cool stuff. Got the Dutch clips up on the tree. Let's take this down and I'll show you the rest of the stuff that goes inside my backpack. This is the backpack, by the way. It is the Chicken Tramper. It's supposed to be a 45 liter, but I have it modded a little bit. Let's, uh, let's start stuffing it full of stuff. Got all that packed up. Forgot to tell you about my Garmin inReach. Been texting my wife. Another little nice thing for you, keep your chair from sinking. All right, let's see what else I got that goes inside this pack. All the things I'm about to show you, well, not all of them, but the things I want to stay dry, they go in a little Nala Foom, Nala Flume. I never can get it right. The bag, it's, it's a waterproof bag. You can use a contractor bag if you want to. I have some socks to keep my toesies warm at night. I also have a little beanie that's fleece lined on the inside. This one's Patagucci. I have my buff, which normally, if it's a little bit cooler, I'll keep it outside my pack. But I didn't really use it much on this trip. I have a Smart Wool. 150 weight um, merino wool mix base layer and I also have smart wool leggings that are a 250 weight. Um, those all stay dry inside that bag. I also brought myself a couple of pillows. So I got this one, which is the Trekology 2.0. Awesome, great budget version on Amazon. They're like 15, 20 bucks. I also have the Nemo Philo pillow which is quite a bit more expensive, but it's also inflatable and a lot more comfortable. And then a few other things I have sitting here. This I want to keep dry. This is my battery pack. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack, along with an iPhone cord and a micro SD. And then I have my Puffy, the tried and true, stuffs into its own pocket. This is the Ghost Whisperer Puffy Jacket. And I actually, I don't like storing it inside of my pack like this. I'm actually going to take it out of its pocket because I don't want a big lump in there. You know, if you pack stuff in kind of looser, like 
you probably just saw where I was packing in my um, under quilt and my top quilt and all that. I just kind of stuffed it in there to make it a little bit more uniform, but there is the ghost whisper. Now these things I don't care about really keeping dry. I have my kitchen and you're like, what's in the kitchen? Well, I'll tell you what's in here. I can't remember the name of the, the cook set that I have. It is Snow Peak. I'll put it on the screen right now. I don't really know what to do with this. This is like a little cup lid slash thing. I'm not sure, but I also keep myself a little camp towel in here. Um, and it wrapped up inside that camp towel, I have some surprises. I have the Pocket Rocket 2. This is the first trip I've used it on. And I have an MSR Spork. And a lot of y'all said, throw that long spork in the trash in a different video I made and cut your bag off. And I was like, what? Yeah, cut off, like if you have a mountain house or um, good to go meal or whatever, like last night I had a Pinnacle Foods, I think. And there are these tall bags and you can reach really far down in there with a the long spoon, but I cut the bag in half after my food had rehydrated and then I didn't need as long of a, as long of a spoon, but that one was nice. I have some uh, fuel. There's my little camp towel, it comes in super handy. And I keep a mini Bic in there with my cook kit since this, um, this stove doesn't have a striker on it. I don't think I dropped anything. And then here is the cook pot. <laughs> Be careful with your water. I added too much water to my food last night, but it has little markings on the inside with how many ounces. Another thing I have laying here, this actually I'm going to keep it on the outside of my pack, is a fire starter, an extra o-ring, and then some gear repair tape called, uh, ah, I don't remember what it's called, but I'll link it in the description. And then the only thing I have left is a little piece of Tyvek lying on the ground here in front of me in order to keep my stuff dry, you know, keep it off the ground, the wet, dirty ground. I'm going to throw these gloves on and start hiking out of here. I hope you all enjoyed the video today. Uh, make sure you check out revolutionrace.com. Use code Jeremiah15 and get 15% off your order. Slap me one of these on the video. Subscribe and ah, kick the notification bell for the latest notifications. We'll see you in the next one.